The Badger 2040 is a hackable ID badge powered by the Raspberry Pi Pico. I bought one last year and I've already created videos on it, including looking at how you could hack the badge to create a game of tic-tac-toe. The one thing that I felt it could do with was wireless connectivity to bring it in line with the new Pico W with wireless. The wait is over, as if by magic, the Badger 2040W dropped through my door. Very similar to the Badger 2040, but with added wireless. I've labelled this video as paid promotion, as I did receive the Badger 2040W from Pimeroni free of charge. I had, however, bought the original Badger 2040 myself, and I have not received any money for promoting this. It just arrived with a request for feedback and the instruction to have fun with it. So that's what I did. I'll be covering some of the details of the Badger before giving an example of how you can create a simple app which uses the wireless capability. So watch to the end or skip through the chapters if you want to see how easy it is to create an application for this. So here's a quick comparison with the Badger 2040. So first here's the Badger 2040 that I used in my project last year. And here's the Badger 2040W. The front is very much the same, except for a bit of an update of the graphics and font. There's the same 2.9 inch black and white e-link display. It has the same buttons with up and down on the right, A, B and C across the bottom and an LED. It doesn't say act anymore, but shows a heart instead. And it can be turned on and off using user code. Turn it over and the differences are much more obvious. The Badger 2040 had the RP2040 microcontroller directly on the PCB, but the 2040W has an entire Raspberry Pi Pico W soldered on the back. This is the first time I've seen the castellated PCB connections put to use by soldering the Pico directly onto another circuit board. There is an obvious color difference between different printed circuit boards but other than that I think it looks great and it works really well. I expect that they've used the Pico because the wireless functionality in the Pico W and this may be due to the amount of testing needed if you create your own wireless based board and the module has already been tested as part of the Pico. But because this is just a Pico it means it uses the micro USB on the Pico rather than the USB-C which was used on the Badger 2040. Other than that most of the features are the same as the Badger 2040 including the quick or Stemma QT connector which is used for connecting external devices and the additional reset button which is a nice addition so you don't need to physically unplug the USB cable to restart the device also includes a power connector which can be used for LiPo or AAA batteries. The battery pack can be attached to the back of the badge but because of the Pico W the badge isn't quite as flat as the previous version. You should be aware of the risks associated with LiPo batteries if you're considering using that. You may prefer to stick to the safer but bulkier AAA batteries instead. The real difference is when you come to use this particularly when creating your own code, which can now make use of the Wi-Fi capability of the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This example here is showing some code I wrote to work with my Pixel server. The menu system needs a bit more of an explanation, so I'll be demoing that in a future video. But I will include an example of some code later in this video. I had a preview release, so I had to install the latest Badger OS myself, I expect that's installed by default for production versions. Even if not, it's just a quick download and then uh, boot into the boot setup mode and drag and drop the file into the removable drive. The same as you would do on a, any other Pico, just using the Badger specific image. The Badger 2040W also includes an updated version of the Badger OS. It's a menu system and launcher which allows you to select different applications that are included as standard. And the Badger OS includes tools for using this as an IBD badge, a shopping list, an ebook viewer, displaying an image and more. The version for the Badger 2040W adds a news feed looking at top headlines 
on the BBC news feeds and a weather app which gets the details over the internet and shows you the latest weather. The examples all include the source code so you can see how they work. As well as using those examples I've been working on my own app which can be used for controlling home lighting in conjunction with my Pixel server. It could also be modified to work with other IoT systems which can be controlled using a HTTP GET request. This example uses a menu system which I created specifically for the Badger with the paper display and because of that I'll be creating another video which explains how I designed that. In the meantime I'll show you the basics of creating a wireless app for the Badger 2040W. It's actually incredibly easy to do. So here's the example. It's a Pixel client for interacting with my Pixel server project, a much simpler version of the one I'll be showing in a future video. It's quite a simple program which has three different options. Pressing the appropriate button will call my Pixel server website and turn on the appropriate sequence. But before I get into that, I just need to explain about my Pixel server. I've included the Pixel server in several of my videos already, so some of you may have already seen it. So apologies if that is the case. The Pixel server is a web-based application for the Raspberry Pi. It allows me to control addressable RGB LEDs or NeoPixels. I've also created a version that runs on the Arduino RP2040 and it will work with that as well. The Raspberry Pi version was created as an upgrade from a GUI application which I created earlier. By changing this to a web interface it allows me to control the NeoPixel from other devices such as smartphones and that provided the opportunity for me to use it in this project. The reason that this is so easy to interface with the Badger 2040 is that while creating the web application interface I created it in such a way that it just uses simple HTTP GET commands. This was intentional because then it allowed me to use it in home automation using a cront jobs running on my home Raspberry Pi. There is one thing you may need to configure on the Pixel server if you're using that and that's because newer versions implement authentication. It's possible to configure the server to allow requests from specific addresses without authentication which is what you'll need to do for this to work. Depending upon the network address of your local network then it's as simple as adding a single line to the auth.config file. Details of this are included on my website. The link is included in the description. So for this I use these three sequences and these are the HTTP GET requests that need to be sent. They all start with HTTP and then the address of the server which is my Raspberry Pi server. Use the set command the sequence is set to all on, uh, the delay is the speed, it's ignored for the all on, uh, same with the reverse and then these are the colours that it's set to and this is a bright white and then a duller white colour and I did that just because I didn't want it fully white. The LED chaser sequence is the same. This actually makes use of the delay. So this delay is how many microseconds between each change in the sequence. The reverse is which direction the chase is going to go, whether that's left to right or right to left. And then the colors as before, I've used the same colors as the LEDs on. And then for all LEDs off, it's the same, but the sequence set to all off. And again, these are actually ignored on that because it's just going to turn the LEDs off. But for completeness I generate the full sequences when I use the web code so I've just used that the same way for this. With that explanation out of the way we can now look at the user interface. And this example is intentionally very basic created a title bar across the top which uses 
a filled rectangle with the title in there and then three options which represent the three buttons A, B and C. The first one for all on, the second one for the chaser and the third one for all off. Pressing the appropriate button will call the get command that I showed earlier. So now we can take a look at the code which is in Thonny. So here we have Thonny open and this is used to program the Badger 2040W using MicroPython. One thing you do need to configure first is the Wi-Fi config.py and this you need to give the credentials for your wireless network. So put your SSID in and your passphrase for your Wi-Fi network. When you've done that, then you can start looking at creating your own code. The example here I'm using is called Pixel Server Badger. This is a version that just provides that very simple interface. It uses the Badger 2040W library, which needs to be imported first. You also need to import the width value, which is the width of the screen. I use that later on in the code. And import the machine, which is the MicroPython machine, and that is used for interfacing with the buttons. U request is used for communicating with the pixel server using HTTP GET requests. And I've got import JSON. I think that's actually just because I copied from an existing code, so probably don't need that. I've got the server IP address. This is my test server address on my home LAN network. So this is the list of pixel options. These are the sequences that I've hard coded into this as I explained earlier. Create the display, which is an instance of the Badger 2040W. So this one just sets the LED and it sets it to half brightness. And that's useful as an indicator that shows that there's power on. Because even when the Badger 2040W is powered off, it will continue to show on the E-Link display whatever was shown previously. And then the update speed is about the refresh rate. So one of the things about E-Link displays is that they flicker when they're updating. And I explained in my earlier video on creating the tic-tac-toe game, how you can change that to the compromise between how long it takes to refresh and how you remove the ghosting. I've created all five buttons. Uh, but I only use A, B and C here, but there's all the details if you wanted to use the buttons in your own code. Now I've got the display.connect and this simple command handles all the background of connecting to your Wi-Fi router and getting your IP address and setting all that up. The draw page is set to display what's on the screen. It sets the pen, so the pen value is a number not 15, which is used as a grayscale color. Typically use 15, which is white, and zero, which is black. If you use any colors in between that, use a dithering to try and represent a gray color. Set the font, it draws the rectangle, which is drawn using the pen zero, which is black. And then it changes to pen 15 to white to write the text pixel server. And then it changes black to a black pen. And it writes out those menu options. And then call display.update to actually push that onto the display. 
So the draw page function is called here. It doesn't need to be in this case because the display doesn't actually change, but if you have a display that's changing, then you would call this draw page function each time you wanted to update the page. And then the rest is contained in this while loop. I've got code for A, B and C buttons and these just generate a URL string based on the value here based on the server address and the pixel options. It does a print to the screen so you can see what's going on. And then it does a U request which is the HTTP get request for that URL string and it prints the responding value. It is actually just a bit of JSON that my server responds with, but I just print it and then ignore it. And then it closes the connection. And this code would just continue to run. Each time you press one of these buttons, it will send the appropriate request as a HTTP GET request. And that's simply it, really. The code is actually very simple. The display options are a little limited because it's only a black and white screen. There have been some changes here in these functions. On the Badger 2040, you just called the dot .pen method in this case you set underscore pen there's been a few tweaks and changes to that but you'll see that in more detail if you follow my later video when i create that but really that's the display part the, di the connect part is all handles all the part about connecting to your wi-fi router and it's just a you request dot get command each time you want to make a call to the Pixel server. The Badger 2040 is a fun, customizable e-link badge. The added wireless of the Badger 2040W means it's capable of much more. It can give live updates, such as news and weather examples, but it can also provide a low power interface that can be used for home automation. It's based around the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is very low power and the e-link display will only actually consume any power when it's updating. You could also include a switch on the power supply and switch it on and off and because it uses the microcontroller the menu is pretty much instantaneous. There's no load time or anything like that. In my next video I'll be showing how I created a custom menu interface and how it can be useful for full custom control of my NeoPixels and suggestions for how it can be used for other purposes. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and click the notification bell icon to get notified of new videos when it's available. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you on a future video.